Hello everybody. Today we are going to be working on a 1992 GT Karakoram in the very popular and super cool Tequila Sunrise paint job. Um, this bike is in really good condition. We are just going to be giving it a, a tune and a cleanup to get ready to go up for sale on the shop. Um, so I was just thought I would show off the bike, clean it up, tune it up, and uh, yeah, I mean, this thing is awesome. Uh, it's in really good condition. Um, it's one of my favorite paint jobs that GT did, and they did a lot of cool paint jobs. It has the groove tube also, so the, let's see, the, the cables are up in this groove, so you know, they are hidden, um, you know, and for 92, that was, you know, pretty cool stuff. Um, obviously has the, the rear U-brake um, with this kind of GT special um, declamp. So it, they cross and so that, and uh, it's pretty nifty how it works. So yeah, you can see it's it's got some grime on it, but I mean, pie plate still there, reflectors are still there. Um, Dior DX, drivetrain, LX, crank. Um, yeah, true temper GTX tubing. So yeah, she's a little dirty. Um, LX, I don't know if that's gonna focus, but LX hubs. Alex hubs. Same with the front. Uh, Araya CV7 rims. I believe it is all original. Um, even has the GT grips. Um, GT headset. Handlebar. Hidden behind the clamp is. GT seatbelts. Now it does have a Scott saddle on it, um, Viscount, but I don't have, unfortunately I don't have a GT saddle, so I think that's the one it's going to go out with. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to start by giving it a, a clean and a tune up and get it all shiny. Um, true the wheels, um, the headset feels good. So yeah, we're going to start to go through it here and, uh, get after it. Um, I'm just going to start with some bike wash and then we'll give it a polish and a clean with some Wizards Shine Master. This stuff works great. Um, so yeah, let me uh, get you set up and we'll get cracking. So this brake has a little bit of surface rust, so we are going to scrub it with some Scotch-Brite. Um, we'll start with just Scotch-Brite and bike wash. Um, we're just going to see if we can make it a little bit uh, less pitted. I think I'm going to take the reflectors off. Kind of take away from the, the aesthetic. I just want to get all these kind of hard to reach spots clean. Yeah, but I don't know how good that shows up on the GoPro, but the, this was all pitted and now it's much shinier and less pitted. Let's remove this reflector, how about? Bikes instantly look better. We should probably loosen it though, right? Instead of tightening it. Oh yeah, that looks so much cleaner. So much cleaner. Now we're gonna remove the front reflector. And uh, that looks much cleaner up front too. Okay, so even the brake hoods are in excellent condition. There's no tears or rips. 
both of them are great. They're not sticky or tacky, which seems to happen to some over time. Same with the grips. Grips aren't sticky or tacky and are in good condition. Now you want to be very careful when you clean the grips because if you clean them with the wrong cleaner, they will become they can become tacky. Um, so I really just like to wipe them clean with just like a wet rag, um, just like with water, um, just to get any dust off because that's for sure not going to make them tacky. And there's nothing worse than uh, having good grips and then turning them tacky. So the bike is clean now. It's had its bath. Um, we need to true and clean the wheels and I need to then polish the frame and tune it up. Now I know that it's in pretty good working order so it's not going to need much of a tune. Um, we still need to clean and lube the chain. So we're going to do that next. Yeah, so the way I like to clean a chain when it's not that dirty is I just get some white lightning. I get the rig wet and then just run the chain. Hopefully it doesn't get all bunched up on you like we have happening here. I just run the chain through the rig. You can do this on the bike. I just find it to be a little bit easier to do off the bike. Chain is clean and ready to be lubed. We'll wait to put this on until we have the wheels ready. Okay, now we're just gonna clean up the wheels and uh, get them ready to go. We're gonna clean them and true them. We're gonna remove the reflector. We're gonna do that first. If you just twist up, they pop right off. So we're gonna get the rim and all the spokes at the same time as we go around. Again, by looking at the brake track, this bike was not used very much and the brake track is in really good condition here. I'll get you can see, yeah, I mean, the brake track is great. So not much wear. I mean, this is the front wheel we're working on. So um, it'll show less wear than a rear, but we'll check out the rear here too and see what it looks like. I'm not going all the way up on the spokes. Um, we're gonna clean, I kinda, my method is I do the rim and like the lower half of the spokes first time around and then get a new spot of the rig get it wet and you're just gonna do two spokes at a time to get the tops of the spokes so now we're just gonna true it let's see where we are you know we got a little bit of wobble on this side inputs are turning nicely which is good Bit of a just we have no rub so just got to finish wiping down the this side of the rim and then we'll move on to the rear okay we got the rear wheel cleaned just like we did on the the front you can see we got that hub nice and shiny now we're just gonna again oops going the wrong way check if she's true and we got some rubbing so we're gonna get that all fixed up. Uh, you wanna make sure you got the proper spoke wrench so you don't round up any spokes. The green is the one I'm using on this wheel. Okay, so now we're gonna tack some of these scuff marks that didn't come off with the bike wash. And what I use for that is I use Wizard's Master to Shine. 
I've been using this since the Yeti project and I love this stuff. This is not a paid advertising. This is just good stuff. But we're gonna concentrate on this one right here to show you what it can do. I just put a daub on the rag and then we get to going and you'll see that that black scuff is gone. Here's another one here. The reason this works is because polish is a little abrasive, so it is going to just kind of scrape that dirt off, I guess would be a way to put it. So for any of those hard to get off dirt spots, I just use this stuff. And then it leaves the frame not only cleaner, but shiny. So I'm just gonna finish up doing some spots on the frame. There's this spot. We're gonna see how that head tube piece come, turns out. And then once I'm done scrubbing, I'll show you how they all look. Okay, so comparison. It's still a little bit there, but that's rubbed through the paint, but a lot better than it was before. You know, the top tube, this scuff, all those scuffs. I mean, some of them are still there. You could go at it with a stronger polish with more abrasive but we're going to leave it the way it is um i don't want to damage the paint and uh, it looks way better than it did um so now we're just gonna put the wheels back on we're gonna put the chain back on and uh, give this thing a little bit of a tune-up and then it will be ready for photos okay now we're gonna put the clean chain on and get it lubed when you're putting the chain on the side that has the pin, you want to load into the front of the railer. Oops. And you can just, because it won't fit through the, the cage of the rear derailleur. Because we left that little bit sticking out right here, we can clip the chain back together, which makes it easy to then push it where it needs to go. And then you just wanna make sure the link that you push that pin back in is bendy. Voila. Now we're gonna lube the chain. My preferred lube is T9. Everybody has their favorite, but this is mine. So we're just gonna do a drop on every link. And then when you come back around, we're just gonna wipe the chain clean. Because the lube needs to be inside the chain, not outside the chain. So I'm gonna wipe any excess off. Now, let's adjust this derailleur. I'm trying to bet that the derailleur hanger may be bent. Oh yeah. The other hanger is bent. Oh, um, you see how it's bent in? So we'll get that all straightened up. So we put on our derailleur alignment tool. Now you always measure to the same part of the wheel every time. The easiest part to obviously measure to is the valve stem. We did just true this wheel, we know the wheel is true, but if you're ever adjusting the hanger on a bike with, that you haven't true the wheels on, it's just important to always go from the same spot and then you won't forget about doing it. It's up and down that it's bent and it's bent quite severely. So this rubber marker was where we were at the top and you'll see we're here at here so we need to pull this out which you can tell by it's bent in so you want to be nice and smooth when you do this i kind of like to be down here to watch what's going on Now both of them 
are at the same distance apart. And again, if you look at it, you can tell it is straight. So we'll put the derailleur back on and we will get her shifted. It's important when you're putting the derailleur on to hold it, keep the tension off the screw as you screw it in so you don't strip anything or get anything in the wrong spot. And then you want to have it up high enough so the B-limit screw goes where it's supposed to. And then bam, our derailleur is back in place. And now we will shift, not dropping off the back. Oop, a little aggressive there on the downshift. Oh, we got a hard, we got a, we got a stiff link. Somewhere in here. Oh, found it. And this may be the one we pushed. So when you have a stick link, first use the brakes so you don't chop the finger off. I'm just gonna bend that back and forth. Again. So we have this rear derailleur adjusted. Um, now there's two things we want to do here. We want to adjust the, the front derailleur, which I have it shifted all the way into the smallest chain ring and we have lots of cable play and so it shifts pretty slowly into the next two. So we're going to tighten that. And we also just want to check that the bottom bracket is tight. So the way they do that is you grab a crank arm and the frame and you're going to push in and out and you're gonna do it on both cranks. They're both tight. If they were to be loose, if they were both loose, then you know it's your bottom bracket. If one is loose and the other's tight, then you know it's the actual crank arm, which is actually more worrisome because that means that the crank bolt is loose, which normally means that the crank arm is wallowed out. And um, most of the time that then means you need to replace the crank arm. But in this case, they're both good. So we're just going to add some cable tension to the front derailleur. So we're just going to loosen this so we can add some cable tension. Hold on on that. Now we'll see how this front shifts. And we're good. Just a little bit of cable tension. Fixed everything. Okay, after fixing the front and rear derailleur, our brakes are looking good. They're equal on both sides. Front one's looking good too. Um, the hubs are good. I checked those when I was truing the wheels. So all that's left is to grease the seat post and the quill stem and then it will be ready for photos. These early GTs use a kind of a unique um, stem setup. It is a quill stem, but they use a double quill, I guess would be the way to describe it. Um, so you'll see that there's a shim that holds the stem on. And then this also has an end that goes into the, the steer. So we're just gonna apply some grease quick. Uh, it looks like it actually had some grease, which is good, but we're just gonna wipe that old stuff off and put a little bit of new stuff in there. Um, we're gonna do the same to the seat post. We just don't want anything to get seized. And so this screw tightens up both 
of the shims at the same time. I don't believe any other brands did that system. I think it was just a GT thing, but I could be mistaken, but I haven't seen it in anything else. So we just need to grease the seat post. Pull that out of there quick. Came out nice and easy. Wipe off the old grease. 26.4. Uh, I knew they ran small, but I couldn't remember what size, but it is 26.4. Again, just like the quill stem, we just apply a nice amount of grease. Put this back down to a, a nice height, and there we go. The seat post is greased. And that is a wrap. The GT Care Corm is cleaned, it is polished, it's tuned up. Um, it's ready for photos so it can be listed. This will be listed up on the shop for sale. There'll be a, a link to that listing below. Um, we'll also have a link to the shop below um, for all our other goodies. We specialize in 80s and 90s mountain bikes. We also have road bike parts from 70s, 80s, and 90s. We have frames, we have full bikes, um, wheel sets, you name it. Um, it's Green Engineer Cycles. As I mentioned, there'll be a link below. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It means a lot. Uh, we're having a, I'm having a lot of fun making this content, and it's exciting to just get to interact with other bike enthusiasts um, on this platform, and so we're enjoying it. You can also follow us on Instagram for a ton more products and bikes that are moving in and out of the shop. Y'all have a great rest of your day.